After the murder of George Floyd, school districts across the country reconsidered the presence of police in public schools. But as these districts deal with the constant threat of school shootings three years later, many are opting to reverse course, bringing police and school resource officers back on campus. Stephanie Sai has the details. That's right, Amna. Just to give a few examples, Montgomery County, Maryland schools reversed their decision to ban police following a shooting at a local high school. Denver Public Schools suspended their 2020 policy, opting to return school resource officers to certain campuses. This was after two school administrators were shot earlier this year. And in Alexandria, Virginia, school resource officers have also been brought back after multiple incidents with weapons in schools. I'm joined now by Francie Crapo Hobson, a professor at the University of Colorado, Denver, who focuses on school violence prevention. Professor, thank you for being with us. Um, the police killing of George Floyd brought to light all kinds of police abuse. Just remind us how school resource officers became part of the conversation about racialized police brutality. Well, there's quite a bit of research out there that shows that the presence of school resource officers and other types of law enforcement in the school setting is associated with disparate uh, discipline rates for kids of color. So in schools that have school resource officers and other types of law enforcement, we tend to see kids of color being suspended and expelled at disproportionate rates. So that's where that, that comes from. And an analysis by the Center for Public Integrity actually found that black students and students with disabilities were referred to law enforcement at nearly twice their share of the overall student population. Hasn't there also been discussion about having law enforcement on campus contributes to the school to prison pipeline? Yes, absolutely. That's been part of the conversation for quite some time. Okay, we wanted to include the perspective from someone who represents the officer's point of view. Here's what the executive director of the National Association of School Resource Officers said about arrests of students. If you ask just about any of our, of our many thousands of members uh, about arrests, they would say that they really do try to minimize that. They, they view arrest, if they have to make an arrest, as a failure uh, from, a, from a whole system level but as a failure because we have so many more resources available to us in the school environment uh, that we don't out on the street. So really rarely do you, should you be in a situation where you're having to make an arrest in a, in a school, especially a lower level misdemeanor arrest. Those can easily be things that can be handled through school discipline. Professor, do you agree that it is the rare SRO who decides to arrest a child, or do you think law enforcement is too often taking the place of school administrators that might more appropriately respond to student misconduct? Well, I think the answer is it depends. If you have a, a properly trained SRO who is a true school resource officer, and there is a, a memorandum of agreement between um, the officer and the school around what that person's role is. And their role should never, ever, ever be part of, of disciplinary procedures and practices. Those types of folks are not going to arrest kids at the same rates. However, there are, there are schools where they have um, police officers, security personnel who are not properly trained. And there is not a clear you know, agreement around what is your role in our school. And I could see, and that's where those kinds of things tend to go awry, where they are involved in school disciplinary procedures. And you have administrators who over rely on those types of personnel to intervene when they really shouldn't be. A lot of the reason we're having this conversation is, be, is just because of mass shootings and the number of shootings on American school campuses. Too many parents have gotten that text alert on their phone saying the school is in lockdown. There is an active shooter. It's relatively rare, but it, it's become part of our collective fear. Has taking school resource officers out of the mix in the last few years put students at greater risk of violence? That's a really good question, and I don't know that we have the answer. Prevention is a really difficult thing to study. And because, as you mentioned, school shootings are still relatively rare, even though it doesn't feel like it, um, it makes it really difficult to determine you know, what contributed 
to something happening somewhere versus somewhere else. School violence, particularly student perpetrated um, lethal violence, is a really complex problem, and there's not a single solution. And in some communities, having school resource officers might make sense. But if you're, if we want to really focus in on how do we prevent school perpetrated violence, we have to go beyond things like school resource officers and other physical safety measures and really start to focus on psychological safety as well. Professor Francie Crapo Hobson with the University of Colorado, Denver, thank you so much for joining the news hour with your insights. Thanks for having me.